Hi. Hi. Um, so we'll start off with uh, yeah, the, the kettlebell. Yeah, the idea was to talk about kettlebells. Uh, oh. It's a relatively new piece of equipment that is being seen in our gyms and in uh, at homes in India. Uh, mm. But it's been popular for quite a while. Uh, it's been popular in the West for a few decades. It's been popular in the Soviet Union for much longer, maybe 200, 300 years. So does it have its uh, roots, its origin from the uh, Soviet Union? It is said that the origin is from the Russian military. Uh-huh. Uh, they needed to have some way of keeping fit uh, during their campaigns when they were not actually fighting. So they'd use, they'd use whatever weights were handy around them. Mm. And the handiest weight around was a, a, a cannon ball. So this is a kettlebell. It looks like a cannon ball with a handle. So, you know, when a, an army, uh, a Russian army uh, personnel would always have a cannon ball handy somewhere. And these things are damn near indestructible. So, so they, wherever they go, they'd have a cannon ball. And they started using those cannon balls for weight training or any sort of endurance training. And then they decided you add a handle to it and it gets better. And uh, these uh, cannonballs, uh, are they all the same weight or it must be the same weight? Right? Uh, no, I mean, they go up in, in increments of 8 kilos. So ah, Cannonballs? No, uh, kettlebells. kettlebells. Ah. So, but uh, then the cannonballs, were this, it must be a single size. Cannonballs come in different sizes depending on what ah, kind of cannon can. they're being used in. And they were solid metal balls. They were balls. solid or they were filled with grape shot or fragments ah. or whatever. Yeah. But... When it comes to kettlebells, they decided to standardize it. And ah. uh, the the standard kettlebell goes up in uh, increments of 8 kgs. Uh, ah. an eight, k- one, 8 kgs is 1 pood. Okay. So, uh, a 2 pood kettlebell is a 16 kg. Okay. Uh, a 3 pood is a 24. So, it goes up like that. Ah. Uh, so, yeah. So, so what is the, uh, in a normal scenario, what is, would be the smallest to the highest range, the commercially available ones? No, no you, you get all sorts of kettlebell sizes now. So, oh. you've got 2 kg kettlebells, 4 kg kettlebells, 6 kg kettlebells. But a classical kettlebell should be uh, 16 kgs for a man oh. and 12 kgs for a woman. Okay. Um, people tend to think that 16 kgs is too much. Uh, oh. But for, for men, that's oh. what you need to start with. Okay. If you're an exceptionally strong person to begin with and really large and you're, you have a, you are heavy to start okay. with, then you might even start with a 24. And does it mean a, a absolute beginner or someone who's already been? For somebody who's already been training and uh, they're already strong and big, you okay. can think of a 24. But okay. it's nice to start with a 16 so that you can get the forms, form right. Get the hang of it. Uh, hang right, uh, yeah, get the hang of the form and uh, see how the weight acts on your body. Yeah. Um, it, if you go too light, uh, you tend to cheat in your form. You you start okay. to use uh, you start to use your strength to move the bell around. Yeah. And basically, you can handle the weight easier. You so can you can handle the you can uh, you can handle the weight easier if you're stronger. So if uh, it's too light, uh, you'll cheat more easily. Okay. And once you start cheating in a in a regular basis, your form goes wrong, and then you it's difficult to unlearn that wrong technique. Okay. So, which is why it's nice to be uh, using a kettlebell that's slightly heavy for your uh, oh. ability to begin with. Slightly heavier than what you should be able to handle. And um, I've read that it's a combination of, it, it works on both your core and only also your muscles. So, so, what's the thing with, what's the difference between a regular cardio, weight training, and then if you compare it to a kettlebell workout? Um, see, the weight training, conventional weight training that we are all used to, the, the, the weight training that we do in a gym is is uh, it tends to isolate uh, muscle groups and uh, it, it teaches you to move just one joint. Uh, it's useful. It has its use. Like for example, dumbbell. Yeah, uh, for, for you know, easiest example to bicep. uh, uh, pick criticism, so, uh, biceps. So, uh, so you're doing biceps curls. All you're doing is this and all you're doing is bending the elbow and extending it. So, this is this doesn't really involve any other part of the body. Okay. You're isolating that muscle. So it's just working on your biceps. It's just bi- working on your uh, biceps. And if you're exceptionally good at training, then you can focus on the mind-body connection. You can uh-huh. think of the connection of your brain to and the. Can you 
elaborate on uh, it, it, you can pro- you can produce a lot more strength if your nervous system is better connected to your muscles okay so if you can focus and if you can visualize the muscle growing you can you can make the muscle grow better okay uh, that is what world champions do uh, yeah, when it comes to bodybuilding uh-huh. so so basically you put all your thought into focus yeah, on uh, on the muscle that you're growing you focus on the feel of it you visualize it growing so okay. that so that that is that isolationist kind of uh, training uh-huh. where you focus so basically on you're completely signal. going into that muscle, muscle and then yeah that has its uses. Ah. Uh, it's useful when you want to build a particular muscle. You want to sculpt your body. You want to make ah. it look in a per- particular shape. For a specific purpose. Yes. Uh, or it can be useful when you're rehabilitating somebody after an injury. Okay. Um, but it has its disadvantages. Like? Um, like, you might be good at curling 20-25 kilos up from uh, with your elbow uh, ah. on, the, uh, on, on the bench and you're curling it up. But that need not translate to a real world strength so if i ask you to pick up 24 kilos from the floor and hoist it and put it over a wall uh, you're going to pull something if all you're used to is curling them oh. uh, which is what usually happens so oh. if so, so somebody comes to me in the op and they they ask uh, they, uh, they they tell me that they can curl 25 kilos or 20 kilos or whatever and if I ask them to pick up 15 kilos off the ground, I can see them struggle. Uh, I can see them... Because it's not a real because, world yeah, scenario yeah, they yeah. used to. So, so the real world scenario is when you need to twist and you need to be in all sorts of awkward positions. You're lifting something and your kid comes and pushes you from behind. Yeah. Uh, or you're, you're focused on something and your dog pulls hard on your leash. And yeah, I've seen this when... Uh, when it's a gas cylinder, yeah, which is much lighter than and the weights you handle uh, in a in a uh, in a gym. But uh, you ask somebody to lift a gas cylinder, they're struggling. Uh, I can hoist a gas cylinder, hold uh, it over my shoulder, walk just like uh, a, a the guy who delivers yeah. it. So, so that is the kind of real world strength that you need. That is uh, the kind of stuff the practical that, yeah, every day. The kind of stuff that protects you from injuries. Uh, that is what you get from a kettlebell because lifting something off the ground doesn't. It's it's not just your biceps. You need to work on balance. You need to work on uh, posture. Uh, you need to synchronize your breathing so that you stabilize your spine. All of that is happening automatically. You can't you can't Not micromanage yeah. each of those steps. Yeah. So so that if you try and micromanage each of those steps, the best you'll do is end up looking like a robot. Yeah. The worst is that you injure yourself really badly. Yeah. So you know training in a gym with dumbbells is not bad but it could be better you don't need to train in that way if that's if 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 your aim is to protect yourself from injury or to get strong or if your aim is not purely competition or yeah, if, aesthetics, yeah, aesthetics. Uh, even so if, if it's functionality then kettlebell has a lot of advantage yeah if it's functionality kettlebells have a lot of advantages uh, and the advantages come from uh, the way they're the weight is offset a dumbbell center of mass will be inside your fist. Okay. In the kettlebell, the hand, handle is here and the, most of the mass is offset somewhere else. So you're going to have to, uh, balance you're going to, have to learn to balance. So there's also a pivot. Um, yeah. So, uh, it's more like a cantilever. Yeah, it, it works like a cantilever. It works depending on how it is How you position handled. it. Uh, so, so, so maybe you as you align yourself. Uh, so as you, if you do a kettlebell lift, the classic lift, it might start off as a straight down gravitational yeah. thing, and then as it goes up, goes up you'll have it becomes a cantle. So, so what does it? How, how does it work on your core? As in, what really happens to your heart, your breathing, and your? Yeah. So the this concept of splitting up the body into core and uh, arms and legs. Um, you don't think about all of that. Suppose, suppose you've got a big rock that you need to pick up and throw across the room. You are not going to think, let me get my stance right. Let me get my core stabilized. Let me lift my ha- arms and let me throw it in this place. No, you just pick it up and throw. You don't have the time to think uh, about it's it. It's not a plan task. Yeah. So, it, it is it is good to have the concept of a core when you explain stuff. Uh, but that's not how... It works in the real world. How does 
kettlebell help in core it's the same thing it's it's pretty much like a rock it's just sitting there yeah. you have to pick it up and you have to you have to fling it around the room without hurting somebody else without hurting yourself so it's just got a better grip and it's more it, 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 when you it compare, challenges your grip yeah. it's not a it uh, you can't say it's a better grip again when you say yeah. better it, it's in relative to something else. yeah okay so dumbbells have a pretty decent grip yeah. but it's a, a dumbbells probably not as challenging as the grip that you need in a kettlebell when uh. you're doing uh, different kinds of movements uh. so kettlebell basically has two kinds of movements uh, you've got the ballistic movement yeah. which is a very fast movement explosive movement okay. and a grind which is a uh. slow sustained movement so uh. both both of them have their own uh, benefits for training uh. uh so a ballistic movement when i try and teach somebody to learn how to do uh, work with the kettlebell there's only two main exercises that i ask them to do uh one is the kettlebell swing and the other one is the turkish get up okay so that's all most people need to train uh. but once you get these two sorted then the rest of it you can build on top of uh. that um so so the kettlebell swing is a ballistic movement and the kettlebell uh, turkish get up is a grind uh, so and i've heard turkish get up is quite a difficult thing to do for a beginner is it true uh, depends if the person is athletic and it's uh, he's gifted it's not uh, just strong if the person knows how to move in a sing as a you know, move his body as a single unit they might not find it very difficult uh, uh, but if if it's somebody who's used to that gym type of training they are going to struggle with even small weights yeah. so uh, it's it's not brute strength there's a lot of technique involved uh, you need to be aware of where your joints are in space so kinesthetic awareness is the technical yeah. term used for it um, and you need to be flexible um, and, and you need to have the grit to hold up that weight for as long as it need as it needs to yeah. complete from the, beginning to end yeah so which is why it's called a grind huh. so it's a slow movement and sustained it lasts for a while and they can take a lot out of you um and uh, is it your whole body that's uh, working toward uh, yeah uh, do you want me to show you yeah. the turkish get up yeah so the turkish get up yeah yeah you can do it yeah. just a second just uh so a turkish get up you start off on the floor i'm not going to uh, should i come on the other side no 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 you can you can start off like this right yeah so i'm not going to give you a detailed instruction okay it's just a demonstration of how this is done So that is one rep. Okay. And then you shift it to the other side. And then you do it on the other side. So this is just an example of a grind. Because it's a slow movement, it's a controlled movement. And it lasts quite a while. Each repetition lasts quite a while. Now you can see that this is just my second repetition. and i'm already struggling for breath and it's only a 16 kg okay and i've been practicing this for a few years ah that's a kind of intensity it has yes so and that's a, uh, do you want to show the swing now or yeah right so so there's so this is a an example of a ballistic movement ah. so uh, uh, the posture um Yeah. Yeah. Your legs feet, apart. Huh? Your yeah, feet apart. Feet at your shoulder width. This is not a detailed. Okay. Yeah. It's not a detailed exam. Uh, ah. Example. So it's just just a demonstration. Okay. So this is a one-handed swing. Okay. 
Now, if you try to do this other hand, right? So that's a swing. Okay. Then there's a a snatch. So these are examples of a ballistic movement. Okay. Uh, and yeah. So yeah. Let me cast so, my and then yeah. Me. We'll maybe go back sit and then continue. So I think uh, just a few minutes of uh, kettlebell workout a day is going to change your life drastically. I need if, I need just uh, ten minutes of work a day. Oh. Right. Ah. So that's that's a, another advantage. I'm still struggling for that. <laughs> yeah. So you do this for ten minutes. Ah. Most of the time it's done. Ah. That's all you need. So you don't need to spend an hour, two hours to in the gym. Ah. You can do this at home ah. if you have ten minutes. Yeah. I'm still struggling for that. Ah. <laughs> so so yeah. Um. So that was a sixteen. That was a sixteen. Ah. Because normally the thing is, uh, if a person is gymming for a while and then they they hear a figure of sixteen, and they would they think, think it's nothing. They think ah. Yeah, but if you just look at, if you look at how how what distance I had to move sixteen, ah. and uh, you had to see how fast I had to accelerate it. Ah. I've accelerated to the top, then I have to break the ah. momentum at the bottom, ah. absorb that momentum, and then ah. go back up again. So the range of movement is much larger than, for example, you might do a heavy dumbbell for a short. Yeah, uh, but for a short range. Yeah, short so I've range. got this much movement happening, ah. and I have to accelerate it up, and ah. I have to break the movement down. Ah. So the amount of energy used per rep is really high. Ah. So, so this, it's easy, It's also a high intensity. It's workout. very high intensity. Ah. Uh, so you can. Uh, so ca compared to the gym workout, you have more reps. You'll have more reps, and it's all done in 10-15 minutes. Ah, right. Yeah. Uh, somebody who can uh, do this, uh, do a kettlebell workout for 40 minutes, uh, sincerely, ah. is a beast. You don't want ah. to beat him in the street ah. in a hostile manner. Ah. He will take you apart. Ah. So that is the kind of uh, that is ah. the kind. Of, so um, I I I have not done any stretching in years now. Ah. Right. If you can see, I'll just show you. Yeah. So this, I never used to be able to do this. Okay. Okay. Uh, before I started doing the kettlebell works, ah. this is all I used to go down to. Ah. And this, I didn't do it on purpose. The kettlebell gave that to me. Oh. Right. So the flexibility came on its own. Ah. I didn't so have to. I didn't have to stretch. So it's it's an automatic process where. Yeah, your body adapts to it, and then it changes automatically. You don't yeah. really. Yeah, you don't have to spend. You don't have to spend uh, uh, half an hour on cardio, uh. Uh, another hour on uh, strength training, uh. and another hour on yoga. Uh. Uh, and uh, what is the kind of fat loss that you're looking at when you? Well, there was a time when I was trying to lose fat. Uh. Then I tr uh, then I gained weight on uh. purpose. Uh. Now I'm again back to losing fat. Uh. Depends if if you, if you gain weight would also mean your muscle weight. Yeah, that and, was what yeah. I was trying to do. Ah. Of course, there will be a bit of fat coming in ah. along with the muscle. Yeah, you know, I've reached ah. what I want to do. I've heard uh, you know trainers uh, at the gym or generally people say that if you want to gain muscle mass, you also tend to you know add fat, especially to your abdomen. Is there any? If you're a healthy person, your metabolism is good. You're young. You might be able to get away with adding muscle without adding a lot of. Fat in the abdomen. Uh, young as in what? What kind of age? Uh, under twenty-five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number, but uh, usually. Yeah. I'm way past that age. Uh, so I'm I'm nearing forty now. Uh, if I try and gain mass, I'm going to put on some fat. Yeah. So okay. My goal was eight kilos. So I started off at sixty-two. Uh, I wanted to get to seventy. Uh, uh, I got to seventy. Uh, but uh, instead of gaining. Uh, uh, six kgs of muscle and two kgs of fat. 
Mm. I have probably gained four kg so muscle and four kg so fat. Ah. So it depends on your yeah. metabolism. Ah. It depends on your stress level. Ah. So there's, there's and uh, what is I mean genetics? Uh, yeah. It's, so if, if because uh, I've seen people who uh, are slim and can eat like crazy, and then there are people who are uh, you know larger built and they eat even small quantities. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a part of the lottery. Uh, so you have to figure out where, which, where you which stand. ticket you got, and then uh, you know don't expect to get the same results that everybody else gets. Uh, but you know if you're strict with your diet and if you're yeah. uh, if you're good with your sleep and your stress is under control uh, you're exercising well uh, uh, getting to 12% body fat or even for, uh, 14% body fat isn't a big issue yeah uh, what is the uh, kind of healthy uh, body fat 12 to 14 is what you want to look at okay i am probably probably at around 20 22 uh, uh, yeah so it's not it's not, it's okay. I mean, uh, I I'm past the age where I want a six pack, uh, so it's okay yeah, for me. Uh, but for somebody younger and somebody who's trying to uh, uh, look good, yeah, uh, uh, you'll need twelve percent. Yes. Uh, and if you're competing, you'll have to go down to six percent. Uh, that's a perfectly chiseled aesthetic. Yeah, you'll see the competition separate. kind. You'll see each five uh, separate. Those are the you know that's the kind of advice you get in a magazine. You know uh, when they when they say egg whites only. Uh, don't touch spices. Uh, uh, do, don't have any high fat diet, or uh, that that kind of advice comes from people who want to get from twelve to six, uh, and the, who have successfully done from twelve to six. Uh, You're not a professional uh, uh, bodybuilder uh, who who competes in aesthetic competitions. Uh, you don't need to get a six percent uh, body fat. You look better than Shahrukh Khan at twelve percent body fat. Uh, Why would you want to suffer? Uh, so yeah. So, Unless you want to really compete something. in something. Also, you know, uh, your healthiest and strongest uh, usually at around 12 to 14 percent body fat. Uh, as your body fat starts to drop below 12 percent, I'm talking about men here. Uh, as uh, as you uh, start to drop below 12, that's when you start uh, getting uh, problems with your joints, uh, or uh, you start feeling because your body needs a certain your amount. Your body does need a certain uh, amount of fat. Now women need a lot more than this. Uh-huh. They they'll need 18, Why is that? 18 to 20. Because of their. The, that's their hormonal makeup. Uh-huh. Uh, usually when they drop below 18, uh, when they start to get near 12, uh-huh. their uh, cycles start getting disturbed. Their mood uh-huh. gear goes for a toss. Their thyroid uh, uh-huh. starts to dysfunction. Uh, so lots of issues. So you know there's an optimum body composition, uh-huh. and it's usually very easy to get to that spot. Uh-huh. It's when you st- try and start pushing beyond that. Well, that's when things start to go haywire. Uh, sleep and uh, do you want to talk about the clubs now or later? Well, yeah, we could talk about.